Pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong defying a ban to march today as citywide demonstrations enter their 13th straight weekend. Riot police using tear gas, rubber bullets and water cannons on the crowds who fought back with bricks, iron bars and giant slingshots. In recent demonstrations, some protesters have been waving the American flag and calling on President Trump to intervene. Jonathan Chanzer is senior vice president for research at the Foundation for Democracy, Defense of Democracies, excuse me, and a former counterterrorism analyst at the U.S. Treasury Department. It's great to have you, sir. Thanks, Mike. President Trump spoke about the situation in Hong Kong before heading to Camp David yesterday. Take a listen, and I will ask you to respond. The question was, do I see a connection between Hong Kong and what's going on in the trade talks? I think if it weren't for the trade talks, Hong Kong would be in much bigger trouble. I think it would have been much more violent. I really believe China wants to make a deal, and they know it puts us in a very bad position if there's not a humane way of handling the problems. Jonathan, your thoughts? Well, I think President Trump is dancing around an issue here that I think has beset this administration for the last uh, couple of months here. Uh, this, the administration, from what I under, understand, is somewhat split. You have some that really believe uh, that we need to call out the Chinese, that we in, need to intervene, we need to take a tougher stance on uh, on, on this crackdown that we're seeing, uh, not only in Hong Kong, but also in the Xinjiang province, the western province of China, where there are uh, millions of Muslims that are being interned. In other words, really to start to crack down on these Chinese human rights violations. There are others on the other side of this debate that say, look, we can't rock the boat. Uh, we have this sensitive trade deal going on, and we really can't muddy the waters. Right. I, I think that what we need to do is go the way of Reagan, call out the Chinese, and stick to our guns on the trade talks. So what more do you think the United States can do to help those protesters in Hong Kong who seem to be appealing for help? Well, first of all, I think we need to be unequivocal, uh, unequivocal about the, the challenges that we see there, to call on the Chinese to stand down, to respect that one country, two systems uh, arrangement that was uh, set up in 1997. Uh, but beyond that, I think we do have an opportunity to impose human rights sanctions. These are called global Magnitsky sanctions, something that the Treasury, Congress or the administration can mete out against those responsible for the violent crackdowns. What about the concern of the trade war, economic concerns versus human rights and proper treatment of people? Look, on the trade war, you know, for those who say that we can't do this because so much is at stake on the trade war, this gives us more leverage for us to, to tell the Chinese that we're watching, that we want them to, to cut it out, we want them to respect the rights of uh, the Hong Kong people. This, I don't think, weakens our position at all. I think it strengthens it, and I do believe that that's what Donald Trump was getting at in that statement that you just played a few moments ago. Is there a red line for the United States in terms of Chinese aggression in Hong Kong? I think full-on violence might prompt this administration to uh, to step up a little bit. Uh, I, and I'm not sure that the Chinese are quite willing to do that yet, although we have seen indications that they're preparing for this or at least practicing for it. And I do think that this is a moment for the U.S. to, to say something now to the Chinese, warning them not to go that far. This has been ongoing for quite some time, 13 weeks or so. Is it a matter of time before the situation in Hong Kong boils over? It certainly feels that way. You get a sense that the violence is just only ticking upward, that they have arrested some uh, of the better known uh, rights activists in Hong Kong. Uh, and so it does give us a sense that things are going in the exact wrong direction. And again, that's exactly why this administration would be wise to step up now, state its own red lines and make it clear to the Chinese that we want them, we expect them to respect that one country, two systems uh, arrangement. Is it also time for the United States to lean on some of our allies in the region who are geographically closer to the situation, say Japan, South Korea, to say, hey, we need you to speak up about the situation in Hong Kong? I absolutely think that both of those countries, uh, I visited both of them recently, and I do believe that they should be speaking up. I think both countries are somewhat fearful of the Chinese, and it's also worth noting that they're uh, amidst their own spat with each other right now. The Koreans uh, and Japanese right. are, are at each other's throats, so I think it's extremely difficult for the U.S. to coordinate between them. Jonathan Chancer, thanks so much. Thank you.